they can't cope with the change. And if the change of the climate keeps going faster and faster, you and I will have trouble. <laughs> okay, I did a little tongue in cheek there about saying, oh, come on. But uh, what, what time frame did this gentleman put on the collapse of, of our world? Okay, now Jared Diamond didn't put a time frame on it. But um, I'd say most models, scientific models, uh, predict that if we keep putting greenhouse gases up into the atmosphere at the rate we're going, that in 20, 30, 40, 50 years, we will have a very, very different planet than we have Okay, right let, now. Let, let's just, for now, just say very serious problem, far more than it is now, much greater. And so it's, what, what, what I think you're saying, faster and faster, it's an acceleration of okay. problems that, that arise and just yes. keeps moving quicker and quicker and quicker downstream. Yes, and uh, that is threatening. And uh, so right now, uh, what I'm doing with my art is trying to add it to the discussion in the United States to increase awareness of climate change. And the scientists, the researchers have been busy trying to change the discussion to improve it so people become more aware. But it's, it's such a difficult scientific story because you really need to have a, a very good scientific background and, and be interested in science to really comprehend what the scientists are saying. Well, that's a very small percentage of the population. Right. And so what I'm doing is painting climate change. Like I think behind me is, is one of my paintings. I think it's called paint, uh, Climate Change for the Rest of Us. Yes. I'm painting climate change. I'm, I'm using the humanities, the art approach, to help make more and more people aware. I think it's easier to paint the pictures than to teach the science to the well, folks. I, I would say that's, that's accurate. Now, something that we have talked about recently is you actually change your thinking when you're planning pictures. There's new things, new thoughts going on in your head. We talked about this just a month ago. So what's new, Michael? What's new? Well, I'm thinking a lot about this. NASA has indicated they might ask me to make a special painting for their new building that captures the essence of the step efforts by NASA to focus right here on our planet. And they're talking about pointing out that they brought science that they developed out of space. They brought it down into this new building. So they're applying space age technology to help make this energy not have to use any oil, any coal, any gas. So I'm thinking and they're very much into the term, the concept of sustainability, because things are running out. Okay, water is running out, oil's running out in a way, the atmosphere, the air is running out. And so I'm thinking about how might I make one painting or maybe two paintings that captures the essence of sustainability for bringing space age technology down here having wells drug down into the thermal part of the, of the earth, so, okay, and having windows open up so they capture the force of the wind and cool the buildings and use energy the next day, and sensors all in every building and this gigantic computing system that monitors everything and that's connected to satellites so that the people, the machines in the buildings know what kind of weather is coming so the pumps can start up easily instead of having to accelerate. I'm thinking about all of that try to come up with a painting or well, two paintings. You know, it's, it's not just taking a small portion of something. We need big solutions, gigantic solutions in order to succeed here. Uh, one or two wells aren't going to do it. So it's going to take some gigantic effort of each of these applications of technology yes. in order to 
expanded enough to cover the planet. Sure. Solar, big utility solar plants in the deserts, on the rooftops of federal, federal and state buildings, on the rooftop, big ones on the rooftops of Costco and Walmart. Big, big utility grade solar systems in, in neighborhoods that are blighted and, and, uh, and then digging down into the, and creating thermal Tapping wells thermal, yeah. and some nuclear and uh, wind. And but on a much grander scale than we've ever seen before. Yes, and I'd like to point out the reason the word sustainability is so much in our lexicon today. It's because it's clear. Oil is running out, and as it runs out, the price is certainly going to go up. And also, we're going to have to put a tax on, on it. And, and then, as the atmosphere continues to increase the concentration of greenhouse gases, there's going to be more regulation to slow down the use of coal. And the result is prices are going to be going up for energy. They have to significantly. So the word sustainability is floating around everywhere. It's sort of trying to get everyone ready. And everyone's starting to think a little bit about the fact that they have to reduce energy usage or they're going to have to pay a lot of money for energy in the near future. OK. Well, we've covered an enormously broad picture. Let's do something that you and I and, and the viewers out there can do themselves. A lot of people are doing some of these things. But how about one or two tips? OK. Now, I wasn't into any of this conservation stuff before I took on the challenge of painting climate change. And as I thought a little bit, um, we have a washer and a dryer in the house. And that dryer eats up a lot of energy, I'm sure. And at the same time, it blows out the fabrics and, you know, it just keeps the clothes wearing out. And one of the best things somebody can do to reduce their electric bill is not to use the dryer anymore. You're going back and, to the clothesline. Yes. I have, I have three different stands out <laughs> in the patio. And in the morning, I wash a load of wash. I paint a little bit for a while. I write a little bit. You know, and then clothes are finished. I take them out. And in the morning sun, I hang them up. And by 3 o'clock, I fold them. It's exercise. It's good for me. So I advise everyone, stop using your electric dryers well, at least, or gas. At ones. least take a shot at reducing it. Maybe yeah. you don't succeed the first time around. Uh, but uh, no, I'm not. I'm. You're, you're going all out on this. Uh, if I come to your house and you're using <laughs> your dryer. I'm in trouble. I'm going to hang up your underwear yeah. outside on the on the fence post. <laughs> okay. All right. How about another tip? You know, every, a lot of people have garbage disposals. Okay. Sure. Bad devices. Why is that a bad device? Uh, for two reasons. One, you put food and slop and whatever into that grinder. It grinds it up and out of it comes this mushy stuff. This so it's like a sludge. Yes. Yeah. And it goes into the city's water system. You know, the water systems today are really taxed. Okay? And water, you know, they have to purify it, take all the particles out, and then they send it back to us. Okay? Now, if you people keep using those garbage disposals, they're just putting more and more stuff into the watering system. And, and you have to then buy new watering systems, bigger ones, bigger pumps, and they have to use well, more Well, they do get it clean, but the problem is that you've got a long process now, an extra yeah. process. And you use a, they use a lot of energy to clean that water. Mm -hmm. So what you do instead is at the end of a meal, you put the meats and the fats in your garbage, and you take everything else and you have in your garden, assuming you have a garden, or else, you know, you, I forgot what they call them in a house, it's like a ledge okay. balcony. Yeah. And you have your boxes for compost, 
and you put all your food scraps in the compost box and you learn how to use them and the excrements of the worms produce compost. And the wonderful thing is this, if you step back and look at the planet and you think about how much we have, the nutrients we have taken out of the ground and the weather and other things, the soil has become very weak, okay? And instead of using a lot of chemicals, if you put the compost in back into the soil, it enriches the soil. It, it gives it new life again. And, as, and then what happens is, you know, your tomatoes grow fast and bigger than and tastier than ever, your carrots and everything. So, Well, assuming you're growing your own food, and that's the idea behind this. Too. Yeah, I grow my carrots, some cauliflower, and a few other things. And so oh. compost, composting, getting rid of the, I'm getting rid of our dish uh, grinder very soon. And <laughs> now, what does Josephine, your wife, think about this? Uh, she's a little uh, hesitant. Uh, for me to take a screwdriver and a hammer and a saw. <laughs> well, someone should take the thing yeah. out. But, but I mean about removing yeah. the garbage well, because it's a great convenience yeah. to have that. Well, we may not remove it, but I want to say I will not be using it any more. Okay? I really believe in protecting the water system, and I believe in composting. You have been doing your brushes. Now, we, we went into something once before about washing your brushes and, and saving the water. We don't have time to go into a cl complete definition here, but basically just, just by using uh, the brushes that you have and saving the water and so forth, I wish we could go into that. Maybe we'll do that some other time because we're running down. You've got 15 seconds to say anything you'd like to say. I want to say it's wonderful to be here. And I hope everyone either goes online to my website, killin.com, and they can see a lot of the paintings and videos and interviews, including with you, people who have important things to say. Okay. All right. Th Michael, it's been great. Michael Killen, Charlie Class, thank you for watching.